Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well. Now, well, this is the last one of these uh, Friday Night Nick Abbott shows. The reason why there's so many is because it's just packed full of fantastic material. And not just that, but this is the, I'd probably say the most important one because for the simple reason, I've talked about in the last video where he, he, said, he basically said, all this stuff happening like the, the party that, was it a party? Wanted a party? Did it happen? Didn't it happen? Maybe it's a bit more of a distraction bomb. For me personally, I'm, I don't think we're that intelligent. <laughs> I just think think you've got a leader who's just a, too much of a hooray Henry and a lying charlatan who just doesn't think long term. He just basically does whatever he can to just get him through the day. But this is quite important because he basically talks about your rights to protest being taken away and quietly without you even knowing because you're too busy looking at this Christmas party that happened or didn't happen and it's probably one of the best ones of the lot so enjoy they lie and 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 what is it that they're covering up well it may be more alarming than you think I mean, more people than me say that this is a distraction thing. That's, uh, you know, the, the, we're going to uh, arrest middle-class drug takers. Yeah, sure they are. That's right. They're, they're going to um, ruin the lives of the people that would traditionally vote for them. Yeah, that's right. They're going to revivify the war on drugs because, you know, doing the same thing that hasn't worked for 50 years will work. They know it won't. They just wanted to talk about something else. They'll just throw anything stupid out there that we can, or that they hope that we will uh, set on like rabid dogs and, uh, and forget what is actually going on. Maybe there's uh, a bigger distraction um, than uh, all of this. Maybe there's layers of distraction, like I said before, like that film Inception. Just think, what would Donald Trump do? If he was receiving a lot of grief from protesters, what would Donald Trump do? He'd ban protesting. <laughs> And that's what uh, they appear to be doing. Or rather, they're going to give themselves the ability to ban any protests they don't like. You'll be able to protest that politicians are unpaid, underpaid. I mean, they'll leave you right alone if you want to hold up a placard to the effect that politicians aren't paid enough. But criticise the regime and it's jail time for you, sunshine. Because all the while this has been going on and on and on, the party gate and the wallpaper gate and all of this uh, superficial nonsense. There's a little thing called the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill, which is an all-out assault on free speech and the ability to protest this government's actions. And you wouldn't be surprised if you read that about some old Russian satellite state or Saudi Arabia, some place like that. But not in jolly old fair play Britain. And as the bill edges through the House of Lords, this government has quietly tabled a raft of new oppressive powers to stifle dissent further. But we're not paying attention because we're obsessed with who did or did not go to a party. It's gone under the radar because of party gates and the PPE racket and the collapse of the NHS and the constant lying and the Brexit woes and pretty much everything else that this government is responsible for. It doesn't matter how they screw up, as long as they can ram through this uh, police crime bill, they'll be in power forever. I mean, if you concentrated really hard, you might even convince yourself that the whole lot of the cascading crises that this lot have engineered has been to pummel us with scandal till we can't take it anymore and we switch off. And then they can do what they want because we've given up. Or what would Donald Trump do? So, among the things that the government has quietly slipped into the crime bill while we were looking the other way include creating new serious disruption prevention orders or protest banning orders which can be imposed on people if they have previously been convicted of what the amendment calls a protest-related offence. Or even if they've just been to two protests in the last five years in which they carried out activities that could have caused, could have caused, serious disruption. The government just this week proposed an ex expansive catch-all definition of serious disruption, which can be redefined 
in the future by the Home Secretary of the day. But it's OK in the short term, because we have the kindness and consideration of the current Home Secretary, Priti Patel, to protect us. <coughs> Protest banning orders. They can require people to keep the police up to date on their current residence. They can include restrictions on who people meet, where they go and when, and their use of the internet. And breaching these conditions could lead to a 51-week jail sentence, an unlimited fine, or both, for being someone who once went to a protest. Wow. I mean, isn't this bigger news than who did or did not go to a party? <laughs> They also create new suspicion-based and suspicionless protest-specific stop-and-search powers, which criminalise people for uh, carrying items related to protests. No placards. Uh. Wrong. One amendment raises the sentence for obstructing a police officer in the context of these, these new protest-specific suspicionless stop-and-search powers. Penalty? 51 weeks in prison. That's the magic word. 51 weeks. Not a year. 51 weeks. Then there's new offences of locking on. You know, a technique used by protesters to make it difficult to remove them from their place of protest. 51 week prison sentence. There's that number again. Or a fine. Or both. You also get uh, the same thing if you are equipped to lock on. I've got a padlock in my car. I use it at the gym. Will that get me in prison? Yes. <laughs> they don't seem fair. And the offences, of course, are extremely vague and threaten to criminalise not only people who engage in lock-on protests, but a wide range of other acts. I, I would imagine not even allowed to hold hands. And, of course, it would have outlawed the suffragettes' tactics. You remember the suffragettes, don't you? And just last week, the government added another offence, interfering with nationally significant infrastructure. 12-month jail sentence, or a fine, or both. And what's a nationally significant infrastructure when it's at home? Anything the Home Secretary wants it to be. And um, yeah, this is uh, f framed as a response to the insulate Britain people. But apparently they were talking about this ages ago long before uh, the uh, group first uh, waddled onto the M25. And it ain't just me that's alarmed. Actual police persons are. Of course, they're ex-police persons, but now they're able to, um, you know, speak their mind. Mike Barton used to be Chief Constable of Durham, Owen West, a former public order police chief in West Yorkshire, and Lord Paddock, a former Deputy Assistant Commissioner in the Met Police, warned of the pitfalls of this bill in a letter to Pretty Patel. They wrote, We believe that this bill has dangerous and harmful implications for the ability of police officers to enforce the law for the health of our democracy. We are concerned that the police are being instrumentalised for political purposes. And three United Nations special rapporteurs have condemned the bill. Parliament's Joint Committee on Human Rights said its proposals are oppressive and wrong. Polling has showed two-thirds of the public are concerned about threats to protest. And add to that, the proposal that the government can retrospectively throw out any court judgments it doesn't like, which is the biggest get-out-of-jail-free card in history, and the proposal that the government can take your identification documents away from you if they catch you with something they don't like, and the one about you needing that ID to cast a vote in an election... And this country is beginning to resemble a dictatorship police state. And we've sleepwalked into it because Covid distracts us and Brexit distracts us and his hair and his manner and his whole paw act distracts us. And after all, he's just that funny bloke off the telly. We can trust him, can't we? I mean, he's just doing his best, isn't he? What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. Oh yeah, I just totally agree with everything he said, really, wasn't it? It's, we have, we've just sleepwalked into this. And I always remember that quote by Dr. Martin Neomuller. If, if you're quite happy with all, all, all this that these people are doing, 
Remember that Dr. Martin Namiola quote? First they came for the socialists, I did nothing because I'm not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, I did nothing because I'm not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did nothing because I'm not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was nobody left to speak for me. So think on, if you think these people are doing it to, for your best interests, they're not. Right, I shall leave the video here. Until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care.